So I've got multiple workbooks in a folder and I wanna get all of this data into one worksheet. The layout is the same in each of the workbooks. Okay, let's see how this can be done. So I'm in a brand new workbook. I'm gonna to go to the data tab on the ribbon, go to the get data button from file, from folder. You need to navigate to the folder that you want to combine files within. So that's the bank statements folder for me. I'll just click on open. And this is a list of all the files in that folder. And you can see that we're gonna have a bit of a problem here because we have a summary document, a text document, which we don't want to include in the final output, the final workbook. So I need to go down to transform data at the bottom here. And what I need to say is that I only want to merge the Excel files. So I can filter out the text files by clicking on this little filter button then untick the .txt extension, and then click on OK. So now I have a list of all the files I want to combine. In the Contents column, I need to click on this Combine Files button. Basically, it's gonna give me a preview of a sample file, and by default, that's the first file in the folder. So if I click on Statement here, this just gives you a preview of basically what you're going to be importing from each of the workbooks. So I'll just click on OK. So you can see what I've got here. I've got a single data set that includes all of the data from the various files in that folder. You can see in the source name column, it's picked out those different files, those different workbooks. Now we're going to need to do some transformations to this file to get it in an acceptable format for Excel. For example, we'll need to get rid of these blank rows and blank columns. We'll need to promote this row here, row three, so it becomes the column headings for our data. Now what I want you to notice is that at the top of each of the statements that we've imported, there are two rows. Now these two rows give us information in terms of the dates for the statement and some sort of statement number here, but I don't want to include that information in our final combined file. So wherever a statement starts, I need to get rid of those first two rows. Now one way of doing that would be to go to this option here on the left hand side of your screen, transform sample file. So any changes that you make here will be applied to each of the files that you're including in the merge. So all I need to do is go to this Remove Rows button, go to Remove Top Rows, and then specify the number of rows that I want to remove. So now if I go back to Bank Statements, which is the view that we originally had, you can see that it's got rid of those superfluous rows. Now the rest of the changes I'm gonna make within this bank statements view. I'm gonna get rid of this column here, which just tells us which file the data has come from. So I can right click on the column heading there and choose remove. Now the next thing I want to do is promote this first row so it becomes the column headings for our data. And that's easy to do. You just use this button, use first row as headers. I also want to get rid of any blank rows. So if I go to the Remove Rows button, I can select this option, Remove Blank Rows. I can also get rid of the blank columns. So if I right click on this column, Remove, same here. But I'm still left with these additional column headings wherever a new statement starts. Now, the way I'm gonna deal with this is to specify the format that should be used for this column. So up here, I'm gonna choose date. Now, wherever it comes across a value that can't be formatted as a date, you get this error. And you can see that error wherever there are column headings. So what I can do now is go to remove rows and then remove errors. And that gets rid of those additional column headings. Now I could also apply some 
formats to these fields. So I'll just say currency for each of these. Now you may have noticed that as we made these transformations, it basically listed them here in the area called applied steps. So if ever you want to remove a particular step, then you can just delete it. For example, if I deleted that last step there, it would remove the format that I applied to the balance column. I'll just reinstate it. You can also name your query. I'll call this all bank statements. And we're basically ready now to load the data into Excel. So I'm going to go to this button here. You can see the data is all loaded into Excel. Now, if I wanted to go back into the query and say sort the statements by date, all I'd need to do is over here on the Queries and Connections pane, double click on the query that I've created. And now I'm going to sort by date. So I'll click on this drop down button here and I'll say sort descending. Then I'll close the load. And the dates are now in descending order. Now I have some additional statements in this folder. And again, the layout is the same in each of these files. That's the previous files that we've imported. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these files into the folder that we're importing the bank statements from. So I'm going to copy those and paste them in to this folder. So now I want to include these three new statements in my combined worksheet. So at the moment I have 214 rows loaded. I want to include those extra rows from those other files. So what I can do is click on this little refresh button. And now you see I have 270 rows and that includes the February data, the January data and the December data. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.